Hey Rockbugs, it's Jade today with the perfect beginner's guide to Small Island Survive the Wild. The game is finally here and I'm going to show you how you can survive in the first few days. I'm going to jam pack it filled with stuff you need to know so that you can really succeed and get a good start in a quite challenging, surprisingly hard survival game. Let's go. So quick note, even on peaceful mode creatures can attack you, but only if you attack them first. And you can also change the difficulty of your game whenever you want by logging out and logging back in and setting it to either peaceful or not. So if you really are having a hard time, you may want to put it onto peaceful just to see if you can kill a creature on its own without every other bug under the sun attacking you. There's currently 13 achievements already with the early access launch, but it doesn't look like changing the game mode will affect you getting any of them. Pretty simple, if you're having trouble with stuff, make sure you've gone and checked every single owl statue. These will give you some tips as well as explain tutorial sections of the game. And in the first few moments, gather absolutely everything. Use your sense, obvious one here, this will highlight bugs as well as resources around you. In the start area here, there is a ton of resources and if you collect every single one of them, you will have just about enough to go ahead and make your first base. So don't just rush through ignoring some of the tutorial sections if you feel it's a bit dry. Make sure you pick up all the resin, the wood and the shoots that give you fibre. Once you're out in the open world, you'll realise that a lot of these resources are much spread further apart. Make sure you talk to Hearn the NPC. He will give you the recipes for two of the armours that you can craft. You can only craft these armors at the NPCs, you can't do it on your own. I would go for the padded set that he has. This will give you protection against the cold. Now the seasons change in small lands and they can change pretty drastically with not as much notice as you would think. Well, that does look like you've got about at least 10 days in between each season. But the padded set that he has will give you enough protection to survive the cold at night time where it can get really cold. And if it does get too cold, it will reduce your health and pretty much kill you. It only costs fibre to make, so get enough fibre to go ahead and craft the padded set. Along the path towards the Elder, another NPC, you'll find all these small little alcoves. Make sure you go and investigate them and get all the resources from these as well. The Elder's way is going to give you some story and you pretty much won't need to interact with him until much later. Eventually he will give you a recipe to go ahead and unlock the damsel fly treat. But not till you've defeated a good few bosses. And that's pretty much how a lot of stuff works. A lot of the recipes you have to complete quests by killing certain bosses and then the NPCs will reward you with the treat recipe for a particular creature. There are currently five creatures that you can go ahead and tame in the game. A gecko, a grasshopper, a wolf spider, as well as a damsel fly and a ladybug. You don't get much protection at all from these sets, so you are going to be upgrading really quickly, but the padded set particularly is going to be beneficial once the winter does move in. The map is a fog of war basis, explore more and you will reveal more, but you do get given a location of the next NPC that you'll have to go and visit. The others will open up as random or once you go and visit Scaldi, they may reveal the next location of the next NPC. You're given some food as well as a hammer, don't try killing ladybugs, they're pretty fast and nimble and you don't really want to do anything with them at the moment anyway. Go ahead and craft an axe and then make your way to the owl statue that you can see directly across from the starting area. Up here there will be some sneaky food that you can get. If you get attacked by any of the carpenter ants on the way, the soldier ones, then just pretty much run away. With a good amount of speed you should be able to hopefully get away from them. You can take them on, they take more damage I do believe from bladed weapons like swords, but for now you can pretty much just ignore them. At the top you'll find all these resources that you can grab, giving you much needed food. As long as your food is above a certain point, I do believe 70, you'll keep regenerating health slowly over time. So always make sure that blue bar is towards the right hand side. The comfort yellow bar course goes down when you're cold. So different seasons and at night time, if it goes below the actual comfortable words, then that means you're going to start taking damage eventually that will reduce your health. Water is not your friend, it will kill you and any tames that you have later on in the game, so make sure you don't get caught up in it. You can get really lucky sometimes and just about make it onto a sandbank, but if you spend too long in the water, you will die. What you first should do after you've crafted an axe and got them resources is find a tree to make your base. Do not build any kind of base on the ground yet. Any large tree with mushrooms growing along the base of it will be one that you can convert into your own special base. You can take this base to any of your friend's servers and when your friends join your world, they'll bring their bases with them. There's a room for 10 trees like this, hence why it's 10 player co-op. 
You can make your base a private or public to stop trolls from taking any of your gear or trying to destroy anything in your base on your tree. Anything else built anywhere else won't have that same protection. The first tree that you try to make your home, you have to climb it. It's like a parkour challenge puzzle. So you need to find the mushrooms and the roots that will take you slowly all the way up. Once you've done this once in the future, you only need to find some of them smaller platforms that we came across with the gnome figure and you can convert any tree on the map to yours. So you can effectively move your base as many times as you want. If you're doing stuff around a certain NPC or an area, instead of traipsing all the way across, it's quicker and better just to move your base. There is a mantle mechanic, it can be a bit fiddly to use, so persevere and you will be able to climb up these mushrooms. I was pretty unlucky here and a storm hit almost immediately. These can do a lot of damage and they take damage for your bases, especially if you haven't got roofs. So do make sure you try and get a tree claimed as fast as possible and you've got enough fibre and wood to go ahead and make a bed. I just about made it to the top of the tree and I wouldn't have done if I hadn't crafted my padded set. Also use the bandage that I was given when I started as well for this to keep me alive. At the moment these kind of lightning storms that make you cold are pretty much the only real ones in the game that do a lot of damage. There isn't anything like flood damage or anything like that yet. When it does rain normally you'll find that resources will respawn a little bit quicker so it's always worth checking an area even if you've gone and harvested it the day before. Once you're at the top you'll find this guy. He is going to be how you activate this tree as your base. You can now call and use the lift to take you up and down whenever you want and you're pretty much safe from all bugs and creatures up here. It's quite a large space as well so it's pretty forgiving if you want to build a giant base and you can build all around the branches too. So first things first, get yourself a few foundations and then go ahead and build yourself a small little box. If you didn't gather as many resources just make sure you've got at least a bed and a campfire. Bugs can destroy your base if it's on the ground and they start attacking it, so you always got to be careful about where you build. You do sleep through the night. There are some creatures that you may need to kill to get certain resources, like fireflies and the firefly bug juice, but otherwise, nighttime in the very early stages, you kind of want to avoid. In the early days, you want to make sure, again, you're gathering all the resources, and it's well worth a visit back to the start area that you came along, as there'll often be more. You can go ahead and chop much more advanced materials once you get better tools so you're going to need to get more crafting benches up and running and keep gathering more stuff. Once you've got your base set up now's the time to be a bit more adventurous and see if you can take on a few more bugs. There's third person and first person in the game obviously so do whatever you feel comfortable with. There is a dodge button but you do have to tie it pretty well as it's not the most responsive yet. And there is also a block button. You're better off holding the block button. In no real parry system like in Conan Exiles or Dark Souls is definitely more about just blocking way before an enemy attacks and then swiping them. All creatures have more weaknesses to certain things than others. So some like these guys, they're more weak to slashing damage or sharp edged as they call it. So that can be axes as well as swords. You can eat a lot of the bug drops directly if you really want, but they give minimal food compared to actually taking them back to your campfire and combining and cooking proper meals. Try and look out for the edible mushrooms that you can get. These can be chopped with just an axe. There are also poisonous ones as well that do come in handy much later, so it might be worth getting them, but obviously don't eat them. Again, these edible mushrooms, make sure you combine them into mushroom steak at a campfire as it will plenge your food much more. There are a few creatures that are passive, like butterflies and moths. They won't generally attack you, and you can shoot them with a bow and arrow pretty easily. And there's other creatures as well, like the carpenter ants, that will leave you alone, except for the soldier variants. If you're getting orange numbers, then that should mean that you're doing the best damage type for that creature. If it's white, then it's just mediocre. If you're quick and agile enough to jump across the river, this can be a great way of getting rid of certain creatures, but don't be fooled, some of them can climb a lot of rocks and quite vertical stuff so they can follow you. Certain resources like bottle caps as well as nails you'll find along the small shingle areas near the rivers. And anywhere you might see a human sized bottle in the ground, that's where you'll find some of that, as you'll need some of that stuff to go ahead and make crafting stations and more equipment. See that dark hole? That is actual spawn point, so never build a base directly in front of one as you don't know what's going to appear. At night time, as I said, some of the creatures turn into nocturnal variants and they become very aggressive. Ladybugs and grasshoppers are fine during the day, but at night time they will attack you on sight. 
When you get the warning that a storm approaches, that's when you've really got to get back to home to base and hopefully not panic and drown yourself. But it might not be such a bad thing. Instead, actually just leave the game and go back in. At the moment, unless things change, when you log out to the main menu and come back in, you'll be actually spawned on your tree base. It's a lot quicker and easier than trying to build some sort of roof to get underneath when that storm hits or try and make it to a tree that you can take over yourself. Some of the NPC places do give you some protection and they'll say sheltered, but not all of them. You can go ahead and repair your buildings if they do take any kind of damage. And as said, try not to leave crafting benches out in the outside as they will take more damage from the weather. Make sure there's some sort of roof on top of them. Building does need structural support. You can only build three or four tiles across before you might need to put a pillar or a wall to support it. You don't craft 20 foundations and just slap them down. You have to have the resources on you and then you can build until them resources run out. You do this by equipping your building hammer, so always make sure you've got one of these around as well. Great feature is that you get all of your resources back when you dismantle something. So if you make a mistake, don't panic. Just go ahead and destroy it and replace it wherever you wanted. You will need a lot of space to have all your crafting benches underneath one roof, but obviously make sure you're using the campfire. There's no limits on how much of a variety of food you can eat. This isn't Valheim. You can go ahead and munch your mushroom steaks till you're absolutely full, but it's still a good idea to diversify as a lot of the ingredients you'll need for more complex stuff later on. So try and make foods where you've got at least two different things going on. You can craft your weapons, but more importantly, you can repair them. And it's important to repair often. If you only use your item a little bit, you can repair it for free. But once you get past a certain level, then you won't be able to repair it for free. And it does cost quite a few of the resources normally that you use to craft it. This is okay when it's just basics like fiber and wood. But once you start unlocking better weapons and tools that need a lot more ingredients, it can become a bit of a pain. So make sure you repair every time you come back to your crafting bench any items you've been using while on your adventure. The durability at the moment is pretty unforgiving. You will be having to make lots of repairs or craft new weapons quite consistently. And again, a reminder, everything you build on top of this tree that you've claimed as your base, you can take to your friends' worlds. So you can go on an adventure, party up to take on harder bugs or just go and find more resources together and then make sure you split them equally before going back to your own bases and tinkering around and doing what you want. You can then hop to other friends bases or make your world public and open that randoms can join. You can control like I said people being able to destroy stuff. You do that at the gnome statue. Ideally in terms of tools you want to get yourself a pickaxe as soon as possible which will be the mandible one and a crude axe, as that's definitely gonna be something you'll need to get a lot of the stems and flowers and weeds and stuff. That's simply too hard to go ahead and chop and get. Don't panic because it starts raining. It doesn't mean every time there's gonna be a huge storm. You often get just thunder announcements and this will happen a few times. Believe it or not, this is the middle of the day, even though it looks quite dark. This is a very much a find it and craft it kind of game like Valheim. You're not going to be having all the blueprints like you can see in Ark. You will have to get new ingredients and then it'll unlock new recipes or craft new crafting stations to be able to craft certain things. Taking on enemies can be a lot quicker and better if you take them on from range. So get a bow and an arrow and even against creatures that have got resistance to piercing, which arrows do, and you're far away enough, you can actually get a stealth bonus for basically getting that first shot in. You need to hold to really get the most strength and damage out of your shots though, but you'll see it pop up like that with an eye symbol and a line go through it once you've pulled off a stealth shot. I'm guessing it might be the same if you crouch and go behind a creature, although I've yet to really give that a shot as I'm always too scared the creature's going to turn around and just rip my face off. Use the bugs attacking other bugs to your advantage. Don't always go straight in there, especially around things like wasps, as they will pretty much attack a lot of other creatures and then you can hopefully finish them off or go and get the remains. So if you're having trouble with one particular creature, you could try luring them over, but it doesn't always work. You might end up with just more creatures attacking you. There are still some terrain issues at the moment with an early access tile, as you might expect, so some creatures do get stuck. You always see clearly if it's got a weakness or resistance. If it doesn't list them, then it's pretty much going to be average against all weapon types. Spiders are not the only thing that can poison you. Wasps and hordits can too. Nearly all the airborne creatures take more damage from ranged equipment. A bit later on, you'll also unlock a blowgun too, so you can fire various different darts, and there's various different arrows that you can craft. Fire arrows, poison arrows, and such. 
If you do get poisoned, just heal up with a bandage, hopefully, and that might be enough, especially against the wasp. It's only the spiders that you probably need more antidotes to actually use and resistance potions. Different seasons will come into effect and it should reduce the amount of resources you're able to get. In the summer and spring you should find more berries and strawberries littered across the land and in winter time only a few will appear. Unless anything's changed though, it doesn't stop them from completely spawning. You will still be able to get some, but it just might not be in such big amounts. Pretty much all the bug parts are going to come in massive use. Don't just think you've got 30 of the bugland lymphs because they will be needed later to make mortar. So there's always a use for some of these bug parts, so always make sure you keep them. Once you get your pickaxe crafted, you can then go and start mining stone as well as flint. Obviously, some areas are going to have more resources than others, and you might have to go further towards the actual coast rather than the river to go and get flint. One thing that has puzzled a few friends of mine is getting silk. You will need shears for that. It'll open up in the crafting bench, so don't dismiss it as you'll need quite a lot of silk, so you might want to craft them. And pretty much as a rule, always craft every tool you can in the early stages. When you do die, you can have multiple gravestones littered with all of your resources that will drop. The only thing that doesn't is the item equipped in your hand and the armor that you're wearing. So just check the map when you spawn. You should see the marker where you last died and set it as a waypoint so you can get to it on your compass. Your gravestone will have a nice little glow with the candles on top and you can quickly take all your stuff. The starting armors are pretty rubbish only for helping you in the winter time so you really want to go to Calve as quickly as you can to go and get the stone armor set. It does require a lot so you're going to need at least 40 stone and a good amount of fiber and the resin as well. Always craft the chest pieces first though, as they often have better stats than some of the other pieces. Or at least some of the masks don't always have the same stats. And generally a lot of the armor suits later will require different types of bug parts for the chest piece and the masks. If you're wondering how to get tames, eventually once you've got the grasshopper recipe unlocked by naturally finding resources and seeing it in your cauldron, as well as the ladybug recipe to get a ladybug tame in your crafting bench, you should be able to then kill certain bosses and you'll be rewarded with a recipe for the bug treats for creatures like the gecko, the wolf spider and the damselfly. These are all given to you by different NPCs. When it comes to combat, I have found that trying to be a perfect dodger can work well with one creature, but as soon as you get two or three attacking you, you've got to finish them off as quickly as possible. So hopefully you've got enough healing items on you, and this will take the brunt of it. So just wade in there with as many attacks as possible to hopefully defeat it as quickly as you can, so then you can heal up. Blocking does definitely help as well, and you generally reduce the damage by a massive amount by blocking. If you can't see a certain tool or weapon, have you unlocked the right bench for it? Flint tools and more advanced weapons can only be crafted at the stonecutter. And once you've unlocked this, this also unlocks the ability to make the cauldron and more. But you can always check the compodium and the codex. In the pause menu you should find it or where the map screen is and it'll give you a rundown of all the story missions that you can go through as well as recipes you've unlocked. So if you want a reminder about what you need to bring over to an NPC, you'll always be able to check with the codex. You're going to need a ton of seeds and you get a whole bunch of them from things like the poppies as well as halves in pretty much any stalk variant plant. Some of them will give you more wood, others will give you more fibre and it depends what season or what area you're in. But you need the seed oil for so much including recipes and to make the refined wood. So always make sure you've got a good supply of this particularly. Once you've got your cauldron set up you can go ahead and make the grasshopper treats if you've got the resources and yes we can finally get a tame. So you bash them over the head, as the health goes down to near the midway point, you should then be able to go ahead and tame them. I've done a much more deeper focused taming guide, as well as an overview one, so go and check out my other channel to see more about that. But pretty much, once you've got it tamed, drop food and then it will slowly heal up. Most of the tames you won't be able to attack other creatures while riding, except for the wolf spider, but you can have them attack creatures when you jump off. Grasshoppers are a bit shy, obviously, of maybe taking on bigger creatures, but they will help you out against ants and stuff. At the moment, you can tell it to wait somewhere, or you can release it and it will go back to being a wild creature. They do take damage from you as well, so be careful with your swings after you've tamed it. You can only have one tame at a time, so if you want to tame another creature, you must release the one that you previously had, or you may not get the option to go ahead and tame it, even when you've beaten it half to death. 
In the future, they are adding stable, so it looks like you will be able to have more than one tame and park them in and out as many times as you want. As long as the creature doesn't die, you can keep this tame as long as possible. It will teleport back up to your tree base if you log out and log in. If you change bases or go to a friend's world, you'll bring your tame with you too. Or if you glided somewhere later when you get wings for your armor sets, then you can go ahead and find it teleporting to you in certain locations. Just don't get them wet as it will kill them as quickly as it killed you. The other start creature you need to know about is the ladybug. These are pretty much pack mules. They'll carry up to 20 extra slots of additional items that you can pretty much take with you. Seems like a lot of the other creatures will tend to leave them alone and they're pretty quick in terms of moving around. To capture them you may need something that can do quite a bit of damage like the scythe initially and then tame it with its treat or its backpack. And you pretty much put the saddlebags on and there you go, you've got mobile infantry space. These guys I don't think attack anything else, but they hopefully will stay out of trouble. And that I think is a pretty decent starter guide in getting you started. Obviously there's lots of areas to go and explore, the map is absolutely huge, and finding them PCs can be tough unless you look up a guide. If you're really trying to play it properly though, go and talk to the first NPCs, craft the armor set they ask you to craft, or look and see where they pinpoint a boss to go and face off against. And that is the order of progression. Look out for more advanced tips from me and of course guides on everything from where the bosses are, how to defeat them, base building guides and even more in-depth taming. Until next time Ratbags, I'll see you for more Small Land on my live stream channel, JPG 100 Days. Come see me live stream Small Land for the next 10 days at least as I try and make a live 100 Days video. Until then, bye bye.